Get that from my water. Oh, that is a joke. Hey, yo, hey, I care about everybody. Get that from my mother. Oh, they die slow. My heart in a puddle. I just drive slow. Free drive. I've been missing y'all, man. I really been missing you. You haven't been, you feel me, really tuning in. Or you don't got on post notifications. So you haven't been noticing. I haven't been posted. I haven't been, po I haven't posted. I can't even fucking talk right now. I haven't posted in like seven days. If y'all wondering why, man, literally I've been having a lot of stuff going on in my real life. YouTube hasn't been, hasn't been pushing my videos, and I don't know why. Like, bro, we normally average so many views over here on this channel. And it's like, bro, my views have went down like so bad. It's crazy. But listen, man, we're not going to let that stop us. We're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep pushing. Make sure y'all go subscribe to my other two channels, man. Link in the description. I ain't going to say too much about those. But just my vlog channel, my main channel, link in the description. Go tune in to them, man. Um, we finna get into today's reaction. We got a good one. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get into this. This unsuspecting man is about to show just how much of a monster he really is. He was ducked off with the with the COVID mask on. Who's shiesty? September 12th, 2021. This man, 38-year-old Antoine Suggs, assassinated four innocent people in the middle of the Damn, night. Four? Our small team of investigative reporters has gathered the footage and case details about Antoine and how all four murders came to be in order to present the whole story in its entirety for the first time ever. Jeez. This all started very early in the morning, a few days prior on September 8th. Antoine arrived in Minnesota via airplane from his home state of Arizona. Right. And footage shows that nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. But that changes very soon. Oh, this shit is getting crazy. Picked up by an unknown person and leaves the airport with them. A few days later, on September 11th, late at night, Antoine revisits the airport in a new luxury Mercedes SUV. At the bend. Later investigations report that this car was recently loaned to Antoine. It is unknown whether or not Antoine is connected to a larger organized crime group. While it's a logical hypothesis considering the value of this luxury car Antoine is now driving, we have yet to oh, unfold the nice story though. of this case, as it is only just heating up. We don't know why Antoine... Y'all yeah, let me know down in the comment section which y'all favorite car to have, like which y'all drink car. Me personally, I want a Benz. You feel me? I want a Benz. If I had a little toy, I'd give me a Hellcat. Corvette, some nice, but I'm a Benz type of guy. You feel me? The day I get money, I will cop a Benz. Some smooth, chill. Then I'm gonna give me a toy car where I can just cut up in that motherfucker. Turn up. No cap, man. I ain't never had nothing. Like, I had stuff, but like, to that extreme, to that point in life, I ain't had nothing. No nice car, nothing like that. I am thankful for the car I got. Y'all let me know down in the comment section. Y'all drink car. Revisited the airport, but the surveillance footage gives us a glimpse at his passenger. Who bears a striking like resemblance a female. to one of his future murder victims, Nitosha Damn. Lee Flood Presley. If the passenger is indeed Nitosha, then this was one of the last images showing her alive. Damn. According to a complaint filed by an anonymous person, a witness said they saw Antoine and Nitosha taking shots together at a bar just oh, hours after getting left drunk? the airport. Records also show that Nitosha's aunt told investigators that Antoine and Nitosha were romantically involved. Putting all this information together, it's becoming more and more likely that this passenger is indeed Nitosha. Okay. After a night of drinking, it is believed that Antoine and Nitosha went to a residence in St. Paul, where they spent time with three other people who would soon become Antoine's other three future murder victims. They were Lois Foreman III, Matthew Pettis, and Jasmine Storm. Just hours later that same night, now the very early morning of September 12th, Surveillance footage caught this altercation sometime. All right, so we finna see what happened. We finna exactly see what happened on camera. So, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe, man. This is crazy, man. Be, be careful, y'all. You feel me? Let be y'all significant other. Because this is an evil fucking world we live in, man. Around 3.30 a.m. in St. Paul, Minnesota. Gunshot? Hard to speed it past. In this footage, we hear gunshots and then that same Mercedes car speed through the streets. It is clear this is when the murders happened. But what Antoine does after this is quite shocking. Is he 
Oh no, nah, this is crazy, man. Niggas whacking a significant other. He different. On the same day around 10 a.m., after driving around for many hours trying to figure out what to do with the dead bodies, Antoine decided that he needed help hiding the bodies. So he makes plans to meet up with his father, 56-year-old Darren Osborne, at a gas station during the day. Antoine's plan was to have his father follow him into western Wisconsin to a cornfield where they would find an inconspicuous place to dump the car with the bodies in it. Osborne Whoa. later told officers that he had no idea at this point there were bodies in Antoine's car. On the way to meet with his father, Antoine stops at a different gas station than the one planned for the meetup spot. Okay. In this disturbing surveillance footage that shows this particular stop, you can even see one of the deceased victims in the passenger seat move limp and showing no... I ain't gonna lie, that's crazy to really, like, be sliding around town trying to figure out what to do with the dead bodies while the body's, like, next to you, bro. It's, like, best to just leave, shorty. Like, whatever happened, bro, gotta be something super small. Like, what made him kill all these people, bro? Well, like, what made him even do this shit? Like, bro, you're tripping. ...kinds of life. And while those bodies are in the car, Antoine is inside the gas station, paying for his gas just like it's another normal day. Antoine continued traveling to the meetup spot, moving from St. Paul, Minnesota to Dunn County, Wisconsin. This time, stopping at the originally planned gas station, we see him and his father convene at the gas station and they speak a bit before driving away. It is presumed Antoine had now moved the body out of the front passenger seat. Considering his father would have clearly noticed a deceased human being right. sitting in the car. That is, Antoine's father is telling the truth. Again, at this point. I ain't gonna lie, for your daddy to do something like this, it's like, he really love you. You feel me? Like, your daddy really gotta love you to really be into some shit like this with you. Like, if his dad find them bodies and decide to really, like, stick this shit out with him, his daddy really, really love him. Even though it's, like, probably not the right thing to do. You feel me? His daddy really love him. That's fucking crazy, though. Like, your dad really helping you do this shit? To the father, he did not know what Antoine was up to. However, it is reported that Antoine allegedly confessed to his father soon after the meetup that he had snapped and shot the victims. What you snap point, for? It's becoming more and more difficult for Antoine's father to deny his involvement with this situation. Antoine and his father allegedly went on to hide the car with the bodies in it in a cornfield further into Wisconsin. It is reported that a local anonymous farmer found the abandoned Mercedes in a cornfield in Dunn County, Wisconsin. He very quickly reported it to the police. At this time, no one knew of Antoine's or his father's involvement. However, we do have body cam footage that details some of the officer's experiences investigating the car in the cornfield with the deceased victims in it. What they find is extremely brutal. That's where we're going to go in right here. In the bins, man. I ain't gonna lie, bro. There's some shit black people would do, too. They'll really hide a, a whole car and the bodies inside a fucking cornfield. Like, this is not smart to do, bro. We did open the back door. If you need to open the back door. Do we know if that one in the back on the far right is male or female? Do you know? The one on the far back? The behind the driver? They were stiff when you moved them? Yes. They were stiff. I mean, they've been sitting out there for a minute, bro. I opened bro. that door. I basically went like this, and it was just, you know, hard, stiff, rigor, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, the male, I, we didn't check anything on him. It looks, I thought there was like a whole, looks like there might be blood pooling in his ear, or I thought maybe that was an entry or exit wound. I'm not sure. Uh, bullet wound to the right side of the face, right side of the ear. 
niggas was not playing, bro. He really killed these people and threw them in the back of this car. Y'all seeing this shit firsthand. They covering it up, though. On him, on the mail. These officers are taking careful note of entry and exit wound details for a very important reason. This detail alone is extremely helpful in determining if the murders were committed with intent okay. or in self-defense. I mean, that looks like an entrance wound right there. Phone ringing. Can't handle it. We're working. I'm guessing she got shot in the body, though. Yeah, there's blood on her left arm and on her right, and it's old. Watch your right shoulder. Oh yeah, they looking all Linda whip, man. They ain't really they get shot the whole car up. Where the shoulder rest is, that white stuff, is that rain matter or skull particulates? Hard to say. Is she wearing her seatbelt still? No. I couldn't tell if it, it was, was just behind, behind, her, her. behind her. Behind her. Just probably so that it wouldn't uh because the weight's in there, so it be I wanna know where the gunshot wound is on this other gal. How do you have exit wounds and there's no damage in the vehicle? Well then then but also if it's a headshot, wouldn't you have splatter? I mean you got splatter on him, but it's just weird. Well his his is coming from his nose. You know, that's yeah. that's just draining from the nose from the brain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Alright, well. Did we look through that? Well, let's just get out of here, I guess. Let's talk to Kyle. During later investigations. Antoine's Arizona ID card was found on the floor of the car, covered in blood. This point. This nigga stupid, bro. This is how you get caught. Leaving your ID. Karma's a motherfucker. You really thought it, bro, it must have been too much going on. You would think once they lift the car in the fucking cornfield, they would have searched it, made sure. Black people for you, man. The officers directly to him and later his father as well as more information was discovered after they reviewed the previously shown surveillance footage officers arrested Antoine's father first and then charged Antoine with four counts of hiding a corpse Antoine now back in Arizona turned himself in to the Arizona authorities Antoine would now be brought back to St. Paul Minnesota the city where he committed the murders. Okay. This is where his dramatic legal trial would take place. Over the course of the next few days of Antoine's trial, he claimed incredulously that he acted in self-defense in the kill. It's crazy how when you first see people when they live in their young life and then you see them doing all this jail time and how they look while they're in jail, bro, it's crazy seeing like that time lapse. That That's crazy as fuck. That's a lot of time just sitting in a cell, bro. So make sure y'all really do something with y'all life, bro. Like, Life is hard as, but you either going to keep going or just give up, bro. And when you give up you, and you die, nobody cares. Your family might seem like they really, you feel me? They do care. It's your family. Some families don't care about you when you're there and gone. But like, at the end of the day, bro, when you look in that casket, are you happy with what you did? I mean, it really don't matter about nobody else. Are you happy? And what you did on this earth transporting of the four victims which the prosecutors stated that they find improbable antoine has had a lengthy history of breaking the law including multiple instances of unlawful possession of a firearm possession of marijuana in a vehicle driving a suspended license oh, he was crashed more. even though antoine had never racked up any charges nearly as serious as murder this made it quite clear he that crashed. Antoine is no stranger to criminal activity during the trial Antoine never gave any reason other than self-defense. He said the four victims were attempting to rob him, claiming he was the victim in this situation. However, going back to what the police learned about the entry and exit wounds of the bullets in the bodies, it's obvious this is definitely not a case of self-defense. Even though no one believed Antoine's excuse, he still gave no other reason as to why he did this. So we may never know his Jeez. true motive behind murdering the four innocent victims. The jurors, after six hours of deliberation, decided that 
Antoine was found guilty on all four counts of second degree intentional murder and was sentenced to 103 years in Dang. prison. His father, Darren Osborne, was charged with one count of aiding an offender. After pleading guilty, he was sentenced to five years in prison. These are the jury ver Yeah, they gave they gave the, the daddy some light, you feel me? Five years ain't too 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 bad for what he just did. He lucky. That show Antoine being found guilty on all four counts of murder. Judge Japal Harris, the judge who sentenced Antoine, told him this. Each one of these individuals deserves that you serve time for each one of them. What do you believe could have possibly been Antoine's motive for killing these four Surprise shit, people? man. Let if y'all enjoyed that reaction, make sure y'all smash the like button. Be safe out here. It's your boy Say. See you guys another day. We on the road to a motherfucking gutty gate. Let me for dead and now I'm the one Can't trust little cuz, I'm bringing a gun Living too fast, it used to be fun My mama just asked if I'm seeing my son I'm in the trenches, I live in the birds My eyes just call me, she reading